Well, my name is John Gates and I worked down the pit till they closed it a few years ago. It was all that I knew, it was all I could do. I was broken apart by the blow. And most of my pals, they were in the same boat when they closed that colliery down. I mean, I'd never been, as I was described once, as a big burly miner. Never have been. Never been that strong. Therefore, I've had to use skill rather than strength. So I learned very early on to earn a living by using my skills. Oh, give me the silver and gold. We still met at the club, but it wasn't the same. The comradeship somehow had gone. I remember the time on that cold picket line. When a union bond made us strong And I never thought I would see grown men cry They were hard men, proud and true And their eyes filled with tears as they sipped at their beer And I shared their despair I became interested in the idea of men's sheds. The idea came from Australia and it was a health authority that came up with the idea to try and combat isolation and loneliness amongst men. That has spread to 14 different countries around the world. And back in February this year, I was asked to get involved in forming one in my state and in May we became constituted and I was voted as chairman. So the idea of a men's shed is somewhere where men can meet and talk to other men about issues that are affecting their life and we do that by doing practical projects together. It's an old saying that women learn face to face, but men learn side by side. The only time my masculinity has been uh, questioned is by men who've never done what I do who really can't do it. I find that a lot of men hide behind the word masculinity. They either use it as a weapon or a shield. They use it as a weapon mainly against women or other men that don't fit in with their group. They say that they're not uh, good enough, they're not strong enough, or they're not clever enough to do manly work. Or they use it as a shield they hide behind. If there's any work that they don't like or can't do, then they dismiss it as woman's work and they won't do it. When I left school at 15, I went to work in the colliery alongside my father. And because I was good with my hands, uh, 
I gave up working on the coal and became a charge hand and eventually a fitter, using spanners. But during the 1970s there was a series of strikes and I was home bored stiff. So I decided that I would embroider a picture. My mother used to have a magazine called the Women's Weekly and I saw a picture in it one day of a rose. So I decided that I would embroider it. Being on strike and having no money, I didn't have money for cloth or threads. So what I did was use a pillowcase as the cloth and I used knitting needles for the threads and I embroidered the rose. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much that after we started back to work and there was money in my pocket again, I then went out and bought a kit. And that started me off. I did several kits, but then um, I got a bit bored of that. So I decided to design my own. And I've gone on doing that ever since but all the time uh, increasing my skills and learning new skills. Um, so I'm still embroidering, but every now and again I have a break and do some dressmaking. For the last 20 years I've been able to teach women to bring their own images to fruition. When it came for me picking up uh, a piece of embroidery that I was able to pick the embroidery up and do it because I knew what was possible and what I find with people is that they will do something if they know that something is possible but if they believe that something is impossible they won't even try it, which is a shame really, because what is impossible for one person is quite possible for another.